little one, I'm not exactly sure where you're going. But I'm glad that at least all of our guests aren't completely freaking out and running away screaming. Maybe a few of them, oh my gosh, I think that guy was actually like, oh my gosh, is that a camel? <laughs> Maybe a few of them are even watching, whoa, there we go, as the camel is caught by none other than Tanya, our wonderful vet who has been doing quite a bit of veterinary research as she goes and catches short. <laughs> All right, so Short is now on his way back to the camel area. I am not exactly sure how the baby camels are figuring out. Oh, I could just climb across here if I try hard enough. But they, unlike all of the other animals, have figured that out. So we'll see if that prevents uh, camel baby escape. But I, I have to admit, uh, among the many... Uh-oh. Okay, among the many things we could do and the many problems we could have, having our camels go ahead and wiggle away when they're so adorable and they don't really seem to harm anything, uh, isn't the worst. Is not the worst. What is the worst is possibly letting our poor black rhino, like, pass out from thirst. So let's make sure that she has a couple spots to drink from. I think that one might be good enough. And then we can also give her some better food. Uh, I think we can give her some better food. Oh, we'd have to come over here. Of course. <gasps> Look at how she's nom nom chomped the watermelon. Oh, and it's kind of messy. Aw. All right, we need to take better care of this habitat, which we're actually going to name after one of you guys. And it's Ren, who also happens to be one of our patrons, but got pulled up by the random comment generator right now. This is going to be Ren's Garden of Surprises because it's got, it's got a black rhinoceros in it. Like, that's kind of a surprise, if you ask me. <laughs> but there we go. So let's see what quality of food we can go ahead and offer her right now. Yes, okay, we can give her quality two. I think we're possibly about to give her quality three because Camel Dentist Tanya is actually on it, making sure she can do whatever she can to uh, watch over our black rhino who has just added some of her own compost to the garden. That's great. I'm sure our gardeners are going to appreciate that. <laughs> But all right, guys, so welcome back to our adventures here in our arid areas where we will be tending to our black rhinoceros and hopefully learning a little bit more about her whilst also trying to complete everything we need to do to earn that golden spitting camel. Yes, yes. <laughs> So we still need to go ahead and build a 4x4 adventure tour, which might be kind of tricky because we need like basically 32,000 feet worth of the tour. Wait, no, wait. Oh, thank goodness. It's only 3,000 feet. I was adding an extra number. I was really confused how we were going to be like able to build anything remotely close to 30,000 feet worth of a track, but that that's more doable. I feel a little calmer now. And then we also need to have five different exhibit species and we need to improve the welfare of 10 habitat species to 90 percent so let's come over and we'll begin with taking care of namusa namusa my dear congratulations on congratulations oh my gosh congratulations on growing up we're also going to go ahead and release your brother to the wild too because then we're going to turn right around and take a little peek at what might be available on the animal market because we still have three more species that we need to go ahead and add in to our facilities i'm thinking maybe one ostrich would be really fun um and then we already have sand cat so pangolin we might have to do but cheetah cheetah would be amazing and i was thinking how cool would it be if we actually had cheetah that were hanging out over by tiffany's house i did it i pushed the button <laughs> So we need to do a little bit of uh, redecorating because this happens to be, uh, you know, hedge fencing and that's just not gonna, gonna fly when it comes to keeping a cheetah inside. And I think they're a little shy. So we'll go ahead and we'll give them like one way security fence back here. There we go. And I guess that actually checks out for it being like, yeah, I guess that actually checks out for it being like a rich person's house too. They're just, they're like, I, I don't want to have to think about the common folk while I'm relaxing in my wonderful pool. But I thought it would be fun to see where the cheetah roams as it moves around inside of Tiffany's Tower. So we're going to go ahead and just name this one Tiffany's Tower. 
since of course that's where our girl Tiffany is living. And it has how much space? So I wanna make sure. Yeah, 19,000 square feet. So I think our brand new cheetah will be okay there. Let's check. Yeah, yeah, there's enough room for even two adults and then some. You can probably have a couple, well, at least one more happy rhino in there. The rhinos need a lot of room. <laughs> so let's come over. We'll grab our cheetah. We're going to go ahead and send it on into our new zoo. And then I think we'll go and we might... Nambo and Zane. 68 conservation credits, probably not worth it. But if we keep an eye out for a female cheetah, the cheetah do breed very, very quickly. And they have a lot of babies, which in real life is because about, I think it's something ridiculous, like 80 or 90%. It's a really high number like that. Really high number of cheetah, like cubs don't make it to being like one year old. Like it's really high. And one of the reasons that their mortality is that high is because these cheetah, not only do you have to go ahead and try to hunt because you are a very large cat, you're a predator, and it's not exactly easy to take down like say gazelle or buffalo or zebra, um, but cheetah are kind of stuck trying to make a living for themselves between hyenas, lions, leopards. Lions in particular are extremely dangerous for cheetah and um, I think lions make up most of the cheetah cub deaths, if I remember correctly. It might be leopards, but the other big cats just are all over the place. <laughs> and so cheetah babies, they just have an extremely high mortality rate, and it's very difficult for a cheetah to raise her babies. So they do tend to go ahead and just kind of cut their losses if it looks like they're not going to be able to be able to successfully tend to a litter and then have another litter somewhat quickly. I wonder if this will mention it. Let me see. A female will be pregnant for approximately three months, give birth to a litter between two to five cubs, though larger litters of eight do occur. Cheetah mothers will start teaching their cubs to hunt at five months old, and they will be independent, independent at about a year old. Yes, and that kind of skims over a lot of the like mortality issues we were just talking about. But that being said, let's welcome in our brand new cheetah! We need to give him a good name. And also we need to like up his milk quality and probably get somebody researching and add in some enrichment items for him, it seems. All right, filter by habitat species. He's barking because he's so small. Ooh, we can put in some of the, the zebra. The Oh my gosh, this is, totally matches with the pink, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, we'll put down some of these zebra as a little zebra herd we can name after you guys too. And then let's see, what kind of toy? Oh my gosh, come on. The cardboard box, of course. That would be so cute to see. Aww. And between the sprinklers and the cardboard box, our brand new cheetah is going to be extreme. Oh, wow. And he knows where to go. He knows how to hide out at the back area where nobody, nobody is. And he can just like chill, chill. Oh, that's so cool. All right. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. There we go. Oh, look at him run. This is actually going to be Dr. Hyena, which I love. I really love that. Like our, our cheetah's name is Dr. Hyena. So many of you guys lately have like Dr. something as your name. And I'm learning that if I put the word doctor in front of basically any of the names for any of our animals, it makes it infinitely cooler so we will definitely be trying to add to that uh and let's also go ahead and let's add in some of you guys as uh dr hyenas cheetahs so we're gonna have animal boy 2000 thank you very much for uh leaving your comment in our previous videos so that the random comment generator could pick you uh and we're also going to oh hey sharon <laughs> Sharon, welcome, welcome again. You are now tucked in uh, as a lovely zebra. And then finally we will have me ranting. There we go. So you three are going to be making up the zebra. I, th I think I called Sharon a cheetah. I meant you are a zebra for the cheetah. Sorry about that. Uh, but that is adorable. Oh my gosh. I love seeing the cheetah on the steps like this. <laughs> I can't wait to see it lounging by the pool. That is going to be so much fun. 
All right, so now that we have those animals added in, I want to check back in on Ripple, our rhino, and make sure she's happy. She wants more hard shelter or better terrain. I think mm, there's just a lot of coverage. She wants short grass, less soil. Maybe I can work on that a little bit, like over here. What do you think, my dear? Oh, no, less short grass, more long grass. Okay, we'll let the grass start growing kind of wild in front of her. I like it. I like it. Maybe wild at the edges because I think that we may have um, some of the staff protesting the idea that they need to go and actually tend to a habitat, like a garden, where we happen to have a, a rhino. Can't blame them. And then we just need a pinch more of that. And a pinch more of the soil. There we go. So terrain is now 100. Hopefully she can forgive us about the hard shelter. And she seems extremely happy. All right, Ripple. You chill over here, my dear. Um, and we're going to wiggle on in. Let's see. Let's see. What other animals? We could put in one of the African buffalo, probably. And because we only need a couple more, right? So... Does an ostrich want to be with others or is he chill? Hey, yeah, he's chill. Sweet. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we might get an ostrich and put it with the zebra or not the zebra. Oh my gosh. The, uh, the giraffes. There we go. I was thinking about the zebra that we had, <laughs> that we had gone ahead and we had scooped up for, uh, our wonderful Dr. Hyena, the cheetah. And then I'm wondering if we should go ahead and rescue this African buffalo as well. Because that would just go ahead and like top us off. No! We should get the Somali wild ass! Of course! I can't believe I haven't done that yet! Aw, and bachelor groups can be one! Somali wild asses live solitary or in loosely bonded herds in the wild, depending on the availability of resources. Males in the herd will have up to 10 females that they defend. Bonds between the individuals are not strong, except between mothers and their foals. That sounds kind of like giraffes. So why don't we go ahead and have them hang out with the giraffes and cross our fingers that it's not too crowded? Come on in, buddy! So we're adopting him from a private zoo and we'll add these two over here and fingers crossed our giraffes are going to be chill with that. And who knows, maybe even the enrichment items for the giraffes will also please them. So that should bring us to a total of 10 animals. Ah, Katie, the African crested porcupine is expecting more babies. How fun. So that'll be a total of 10 habitat species. And then we need five different exhibit species. And oh, we hit 1,200 guests. Oh my gosh, you guys. <gasps> we might be like about to actually accomplish this. I might. Wow. I mean, I'm not going to complain because it'll be really fun to go ahead and just be able to like sassily stroll off into the distance with my golden camel, like spitting statue. But like, I don't know. I don't know. All right. That just... It's, it's coming up kind of quickly, you know? So the cave is a tropical themed building with five small exhibits. Well, I need five. And if there's five exhibits in here, and like maybe we, the cave doesn't seem very themed for this area though. Oh, there's the big snake. We've used that before <laughs> in one of our zoos. Uh, we also have the Indian medium ones. We have a big pyramid. I don't know how many reptiles might be in the pyramid. Uh, oh, the ruins! Oh, this is perfect! This is really perfect! Oh my gosh! Like, it just fits thematically and everything. And I think we can actually sneak this in just right inside of the fencing. Like, and we can say almost, almost, oh my gosh, that's actually perfect. I love that. Okay, we'll have to connect a few more things. And then we could actually put in, like, another chunk of ruins over here. And then just have people walk through here in order to see the exhibit species. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my gosh. We uncovered some new ruins and built up the city. That's so fun. Uh, I think we'll have a special like archeologist crew come in and they will be the ones to tend to this area. We'll take away the curb path. We'll make sure that we can get everybody all connected up, I think. Maybe like this first. There we go. 
and then like this. Gotcha, gotcha. And then let's see, yeah, this is actually already connecting to this path, so guests can come and see. Trying to make sure that we have just everything prepped over here before. Oh no, oh no. Before it gets too chaotic. Okay, hang on. All right, hang in there, little paths. Maybe if you're a little shorter, so we can maybe work together on trying to make it so people can see everything. I think people could see on that side, maybe. Oh dear. All right. Oh boy. Well, you know how you know how it is when you're trying to work with these paths. Um. Okay, there's that. There's this one. Oh my gosh. Yes, we did it. Okay. And now maybe this and. <gasps> We did it! I'll take it, I'll take it. No questions, no questions asked. I will just accept whatever whatever fate decrees is good enough for now. And we'll connect it to over here. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Like I said, I'll just accept whatever fate decrees as sure I'll let your path work this time. There we go. Okay, it's not it's not as beautiful as it could be. Actually, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it a little prettier than that. All right, and then let's stretch this. Maybe? Hmm. Come on, I know, I know Tiffany's gonna take this place over and we'll have to just like take all of our, our talent off to our Sahula Sand Safari area, but still, there we go. Yay, all right, this is gonna be really fun because now we'll have like an undiscovered uh, or like a rediscovered little city that we can have some new keepers take care of. Woo! Also, Dawashi, thank you for joining us. Those Dama Gazelle actually breed really quickly. I'm quite impressed by that. Speaking of breeding quickly, just a quick check for Cheetah. Hmm, just making sure. And uh, we actually do have the Death Adder who we can start researching at our little lost cities in just a second here. But let's get a couple more keepers just to make sure that we are not neglecting our new archeology span digs because those exhibit species can kind of catch up with you pretty quickly. So now we are going to have Tess. So archeologist, Tess, thank you so much for supporting us over in our Patreon and keeping all of these adventures going. Welcome, welcome to Tiffany's Tower. I hope that you will enjoy your stay. Uh, do, do take care to like, watch for any of her shoe shipments. I don't know if we get like Amazon delivery in the middle of the Sahara Desert, but still. And then I would also like to welcome in Raya. Raya, welcome. You're also going to be archeologist Raya. I think maybe we'll like reassign you guys to something that sounds a little bit more exciting and specific once we figure out what kind of animals we uh, are gonna have in here. So, Let's finish off by uh, checking out the exhibit trading for today, friends. We have the Desert Horned Viper. We've got the Giant Desert Hairy Scorpion. Excellent, excellent. We'll grab a couple of those for sure. We have the Giant Forest Scorpion. The, the Gila Monster. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Mexican Red Tarantula. The Puff Adder. Uh-huh. The Western Diamond. Uh, the Desert Horned Viper is not the... Is that the one that came in? Maybe. I thought it was the Death Adder that came in the red pack. I think that I can be forgiven if I get it a little bit, a little bit crosswise because <laughs> there's a million, there's a million animals. All right, give me one second. I'm double checking. It is the Desert Horned Viper, not the Death Adder. What the heck? Well, there we go. And Katie, our African Crested Porcupine is having more babies again. I love it. All right, well, let's go ahead and add in a healthy male and one of the female desert horned vipers. We'll also get the eastern brown snakes. I'm trying to remember, there's two brown snakes in the world. One, extremely deadly. The other, not extremely deadly. It reminds me of a certain conflict over if it's delectable tea or deadly poison. Um, except this time it happens to be like, is this a snake that will kill me? Or is this a snake that I can go ahead and get close to? We'll go and deal with that in just a moment. Let's see. And then let's put in those two. And then let's put in, let's put the Gila monsters back there. There we go. All right, so let's make sure that we are taking good care of these guys, temperature and humidity wise. And then I actually might have to, uh, I might have to leave you guys to take care of Tiffany's 
wonderful cheetah a little bit sooner than I wanted because it just started thunderstorming with like severe lightning and thunder outside of my window in real life. <laughs> Once again, extremely ironic whilst we are working literally in a desert with all of our adventures here in our wonderful, wonderful arid zoo. All right, let's, let's crank up. There we go. All right. And they're good. They're good. And let's make sure exhibit one is now good. Layout is just not the best. Okay, we did it! Woo! We have some new exhibit species and the beginning of what I think may soon be uh, everything we need to really accomplish for our adventures here in the Arid Pack. But we still have not earned that golden spinning camel. And I am actually quite tickled at the things that we have discovered, the things we have created, and the challenge that we have taken on. So we might just try to go ahead and get our hands on more of these shiny statues. But for now, I need to leave you guys a little bit earlier than I thought because that was more lightning striking trees near my door. So, bye bye